Hi, I'm Daz, G7SDC, and today's show and tell video is about my 10 GHz wideband FM voice transmitter and receiver that was made from an old drop a dropola a burger alarm system. Here we can see the gun diode transmitter. As you can see, there's a control for frequency, a switch for tone or microphone, so you can send out a tone or switch the microphone in. There's just a power indicator and a fuse and an off on off switch. Just looking inside the unit, you can see the two gun diodes. One of them is a mixer that was used, a mixer diode that was used originally when it was an alarm system. I'm not using that, this in this application. Instead I'll be relying on an LMB for reception. Here's the modulator, tone generator and microphone preamp board. Very, very simple. Just a few discrete transistors and one IC, an LM317 or in this case a 337 because my diodes are positive to the case so I've used um, the opposite polarity voltage regulator just some quick views close-up views of the gun diode those two brass screws you can see there are to adjust the uh, frequency of the or course frequency adjustment of the gun diode so it's a case of just setting them up but um, be be cautious when you set them up that uh, the receiver is a little distance away because you may set it to a, a spur instead of the the main frequency. This is the shot of the front of the two gun diodes. The transmitter is on the right and if you look there's a small gap there. When this was a burglar alarm the idea was that the some of the RF from the transmitter would leak through to there and energise the mixer diode. Therefore, when some reflected signal was received in here, it would mix with it, and because a movement would make the frequency high and lower, it would mean that you would get a low frequency AC voltage generated across that diode on the left. And that was rectified and detected, and that would activate the, uh, the alarm system. I thought we'd go to the notepad and have a quick explanation to what's going on here. The gun diode is modulated by a simple voltage regulator, an LM317. Because we're dealing with audio here, we don't need a lot of bandwidth, so this works quite well. As you can see, it's just the classic voltage uh, regulator setup, except we've got an input here via a coupling capacitor, so we can modulate the voltage slightly. And then when we modulate the supply voltage to a gun diode, it will FM modulate. So that's what that uh, is basically for. Just a very quick um, block diagram here. Uh, the modulator, which you've just seen here, is connected to the gun diode. And we've got a switch. There's a tone generator, which, believe it or not, is just a simple acetate mod vibrator with two transistors. The audio amplifier is just a single stage Class A amplifier. And just an ordinary cassette player microphone. The LMB has a local oscillator frequency of 9.75 gigs so to work out how to receive my transmit frequency which I've put in the middle of the wideband section of the 10 gigahertz band it ends up being 625 megahertz. Although the LMB is only designed to output down to 950 megahertz the filters in these LMBs are not particularly sharp, so we're able to still receive this frequency even though it's outside the normal passband of the output filter of the LMB. We're looking across the gun diode on the oscilloscope, and you can see we've just got over 7 volts DC there. And if I shout very loudly, or whistle even, you can just about see the modulation in superimposed on the DC there. Because of the low deviation here compared to video, there is very little um, to show on the scope. And that noise you can see is because um, I've got things floating here and LED lighting, which does tend to cause a bit of interference. 
This is the receive setup for the 10 GHz voice. Here we have a satellite LMB. This is a phase locked loop version, not a DRO, because it's much more stable. And as we, we're talking about wideband FM voice here, rather than video, we need a little bit more stability. This device here is a power inserter. I can just get it in the light correctly. The purpose of this is to allow us to pass 12 volts to the LMB and then take the RF to the scanner without passing 12 volts into the scanner, which wouldn't really do it a lot of good. This is a handheld scanner. It's currently tuned to 625 MHz, which is the frequency we end up with from my transmitter. That has wideband FM switchable on it so that um, it's compatible with what we're transmitting. Golf 7 Sierra Delta Charlie, this is Golf 7 Sierra Delta Charlie. Golf 7 Sierra Delta Charlie. Just a demonstration of how sensitive a gun diode is if you um, put your hand in close proximity to it. Because we're on a Y-band FM audio signal, of course it's, it's quite narrow band, about 75 kHz deviation. So it doesn't take a lot of disturbance to the gun diode to make it go um, off frequency. So when you set up the transmitter, it's best to make sure there's nothing in front of you. Setting it up on the bench like this is not ideal. I hope this short video has given you some ideas about getting into 10 GHz. It is quite simple. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Open up your web browser and do a little bit of searching on the web and uh, use a few keywords like 10 GHz wideband or 10 GHz voice and I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Anyway, thanks for watching my video and I hope to see you very soon.